Why, hello. It hasn't been that long since I've been here, but Duck Derby happened. All of the winners have been chosen. All of the prizes have gone out. In fact, at the very end of this, I'll just kind of scroll a name of winner, uh, all of the names of winners because several people have asked. And uh, yeah, people should be getting their prizes if they have not already. Some people have reached out to me and told me that they have already gotten them, which is amazing. The international ones, of course, always take a little bit longer. What I want to do first is you guys know that I partner with the glasses company Zenth Optical. So I will put their name right here and they reached out to me again. And I think some of the, the glasses that I've gotten from them that I wear from them, these are Priums. I have another care, a pair called Moose. Uh, I have a pair that an old prescription that I loved called Fatal. And I think that most of them are out of stock or, you know, just not really what they're promoting right now. So they're like, go pick another pair. So I did, and they want me to actually open these on screen and just give a really honest review of what I think about them. So I, I will say I have loved all of the glasses that I have gotten from Zenth. They do not have the selection that like, say, if you go on Zenny, but their selection is improving all of the time. They limited my, um, my choices on this one, which I didn't mind, but they sent me a link and it's basically like, I don't know what's hip and trendy right now. There was one or two pairs that would have been a safe Emily choice. But I told the girl that I was corresponding with, ripped into this now, we've got their, their white box. But I told the girl I was corresponding with, I said, look, I'm, I'm gonna do a little bit of an out there choice for me. And she was like, you know what? Sometimes we need to try something new and different. Like you go girl. So we've got their box inside of this box. So, protecting their box. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna push their box out that way. There we go. So this is what you get. You get their really nice Zenth case. Made from recycled materials, if that's something that is important to you. See all the possibilities. And it's like a little drawer. So if you have multiple pairs from them, you can kind of, like I stack these in my closet. So they're safe, they're dust free, they're in there, they're really neat and organized. So here we go. Let's see, it gives me a code for me. <clears throat> Will make a difference in the world. Tells you all about their glasses, their promises. They have a 30-day fit and style guarantee, um, a 365-day product guarantee, just for their quality. Um, Eco-friendly packaging, which I do really like. I like that they have this really sturdy cardboard packaging, and it's not just plastic. Um, new glasses, new day. Uh, yeah, talking about adjustment with new frames. I think we've all experienced that. If you get a totally different frame shape, like things feel kind of different or a new prescription. Uh, cleaning glasses, how to adjust your glasses. Uh, adjusting the temple tips, adjusting nose pads. This is nice. All right, here we go. Of course, they come with a cleaning cloth, which I love. Jim was not a huge fan of these. He felt like that they felt like too, he likes retro, but I think these seemed too retro, <laughs> like somebody's mom. Oh my gosh, I kind of love these. These are the Amy style, and they are actually, when you get up close to them, they're green. 
Oh, these are so cool. I think this was a good choice for me. I usually never choose glasses with the little nose things. I usually do the complete plastic the way that these are. But a lot of the newer styles have these. Oh, these are so cool. And this is a perfect fit. As usual, my recommendations on finding glasses that are a good fit for you is just looking at the measurements of the glasses that you already own and narrowing that down. Like you can filter glasses on a site by size. I know I'm usually a medium. These I think were actually, I think the Amy's are a large, but if you look at the temple length, if you, what's really important to me is the bridge size. I want my bridge size to be somewhere between like a, a 17 and 19 for it to fit me well. And that, that factors out like, or filters out a lot of glasses when you really, but you're going to get a pair of glasses that are fitting you really well. Man, these are cool. These are really cool. The green in person isn't like super green. I was worried that it was going to be super, super green, but it's just like a really, really subtle olive. Man, these are cool. Okay. So I'm super happy with these. These that I wear every day from this company may go in this box for a while and not see the wear as much. These are cool. Okay. If you are interested in buying from them, you can get 25% off your entire order by putting in the code EMILYL7. Not sure why Emily L. I think they, because I've used Emily C multiple times. So Emily L7. And if you want glasses just like me, look up the Amy frames. So excited. These are awesome. And my other ones were pretty big too, so it's, it's not really going to take a lot of adjustment. Okay, let's get into stitching. Since I saw you guys last, I only did like one day on this project. This is Riley Harbor by Kathy Barrick. And if you're thinking, I think I've heard of this glasses company other than you. I've noticed that um, the Seattle Stitcher, Megan um, Babauta, Babuda, Babauta, I believe, uh, she's partnered with them now as well. So if you think that Megan has really cool and trendy glasses, she's getting them from Zenth. Okay, so Riley Harbor. I got a lot done on this, guys. It's such a fun stitch. I started putting in the waves. I will say the DMC conversion, the blue is really different. Like, but I kind of dig it. Instead of that paler blue, it's more of a teal and I kind of really dig it. So I stuck with it. Jim and I, I, I'm actually going to be out of town a lot next month, like a lot, like half the month. Um, the first trip that I'm taking, okay. I won't tell you about that yet. I'll save that. The second trip that I'm taking is Jim and I are going to go visit his parents in New Hampshire. They're snowbirds. They go back and forth in between New Hampshire and Florida. And when it's hot, they're in New Hampshire. So I will probably take this with me to New Hampshire. It's pretty exciting. Okay. Because that'll be good. Um, you know up north stitching. It's not like they're in, on the Cape or anything, but we are also going to do a little side trip over to Massachusetts because my sister and my youngest niece are going with us. And I asked my sister, where would she really like to go? And she's never been to Salem, Massachusetts. I've been twice. 
So we're, it's not a super short drive over to Salem, but we're going because she needs to go. So yeah, it'll be good for, for some out of town up north stitching. I have been pulling this piece out. This is the Weaver's Tapestry Band Sampler. It's a free chart by Magical525. She has a Blogspot account. Google it, it's easy to find. She actually has several free charts. I'm definitely, I can tell these classes, there is gonna be a slight adjustment. It's definitely the correct prescription, but what I'm seeing is different. So it does, my eyes do feel a little different. Anyway, easily distracted. So this is a piece of Bramble by Picture This Plus. I'm doing this in DMC Espresso. And it's DMC 4000. I put in a lot of time on this this last time because I did this whole section. I didn't want to do it partially and then come back to it and not be done. I really wanted to finish this whole thing. So this is where I am now. I only have a little decorative section, one more little section about like this, and it's done. So this will be done this year. <clears throat> Just gonna scroll it up so you can see it. And then this is what was done this time. Love it. I don't know where I'm gonna put this. I don't know, maybe this will go in our dining room that I'm redoing currently. <sighs> Jim, I love my husband, but he doesn't watch my videos. So we're gonna vent for a second. <laughs> he flip flops in between. <clears throat> Home decor is your thing. You do what you want. Hold on one second. <clears throat> he goes in between. Home decor is your thing. You care more than me. You do what you want. Um, Cause I'll like, do you like this rug? Do you like this pink color? Do you like these curtains? And he's like, just pick something out. So I do. And I do the decor in the entire house the way that I want it. And he's like, okay. And then like yesterday when he's like, this entire house is just all your stuff. This is all stuff that you've picked out. This is all your stuff. None of my stuff is displayed. Dude, <laughs> do y'all, do you guys, those of you that are married or are like co-inhabiting or whatever with people, like, do you have the same issue? You either, you either care or you don't, dude. <laughs> I love him. I love my husband. We have a wonderful marriage. We really do. And he is fantastic. But I'm like, <laughs> so I'm like, well, what would you like to put up? What would you like to display? I am completely open to this. Like, you just tell me. So I think our dining room, he said, well, maybe I want to put some of my framed comic books in the dining room. I'm like, okay, we can, you know, we can mesh yours and mine together and that's perfectly fine. But then like, we framed those comic books together like 10 years ago when we made way less money and they're in these little cheapo frames that you know, we, we can do better than that now. So I was like, you tell me which ones that you want to put in the dining room and I'll, I'll reframe them. And he's like, they're already in frames. Why would we reframe them? Because because they don't look great. <laughs> We've upgraded, like we have nicer stuff now. 
I love my husband. I really do. I love him. I love him so much. So much <laughs> that I am continuing to work on the seventh sheep sampler because this year is our 10 year wedding anniversary. And I want this done and framed before our 10 year anniversary in October. I told you I love him. I do. Even the best couples have little tiffs over silly stuff. So I just pulled this back out. I'm not going to take it out of the cue snap because I'm going to immediately go downstairs and pop this right back in my, um, I work off of a K's creation floor stand. I'll clamp it right here and I'll go right back to stitching. You can see I, I even have a, a thread showing you what I've been working on. So what I did yesterday is I completed this motif. I had some of the yellow branches and a couple of these orange flowers. I did all of the orange flowers, um, did some more yellow, and got this pot in. What I'm going, what I'm working on next is there is a berry bowl right here. I'm getting that in and then I will move on to, there is another one of these that will go right here. This is the center of the design here. And then I have a new needle minder from Mad for Minders. I don't know, I saw this one, I just really liked it and I thought it would look good with this piece because I'll show you my haul in a little bit. And there is a minder that I obviously had to purchase. So this is towards the bottom. Right underneath this uh, berry bowl, I will go ahead and put in the bird. You can see here um, who is on top of the tree that's at the bottom. So, you know, I need to get after it. Um, that's all the stitching that I have. I really did a lot of focusing on stuff. I do have some haul right here as I reach around the camera to grab it. I have another project bag <laughs> because I can't help myself. I just saw this one. I thought it was really pretty and I would want to put a piece in it, so... I, from Mad for, Mad for Minders, I also, I got these two minders. You can tell which one really pushed me to order. Is this Amityville Horror piece right here. I put on my order form, I was like, I could not turn down that. So I put a couple more in that I really like to go with it. Definitely recommend the shop. Um, I picked up this Plum Street while I was on that site because it says it's a 2021. I don't really remember this one. It's really pretty. I don't think I would do the little verse, but I often take off verses or change verses on her pieces because they're very often religious. You know, you do you, boo. But it's not my thing, so I'll either switch out the verse or I'll duplicate some motifs or something but it's really pretty i love all of i love all of the orange i'm a big orange girl so there's that so when i was in arizona several of the ladies were like we've got to see your tattoo in person i i'm showing this to you more because I wasn't exactly happy with this purchase but I saw it and I was like that's a really cool sampler on the front of this vintage book I would love to stitch that surely this chart is in there no nah. <laughs> so I get this and says the author explains the origins of samplers and however the long history of their production the motifs and the colors have evolved so that your creation will have the genuine tradition look of your grandmothers and great-grandmothers so nowhere that I could find this book showed this on the back I and mean, it was just the cover and I, it's the world's most beautiful samplers for you to make at home. It's just a collection of motifs and many of the motifs that 
are in the samplers that you can see are in here, but not necessarily all of them. But you know, it for the little bit of money that I paid for it, it was it was nice to look at. But just know there aren't full charts in this book. If you get it for you, it is motifs here and there. So there's that. Um, oh, the other trip that I'm taking, I am, before we go to New Hampshire, there is the National CASA Conference in St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm going to that. So I will get there, uh, I think I fly in on June 9th, but my plan is on the 10th, I'm going to go to Color and Cotton and buy some threads and some fabrics and just see the shop. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'm going to take a couple of pieces with me and buy threads or fabric for them. One of the ones that I'm going to get fabric for is this piece that you saw me talk about in my last video. This GGR piece where I'm just going to do the center. But I plan on taking all of the threads that I have for it and you know just being able to lay the threads down on fabrics and be like you know this might get lost or that might get lost if you don't have an LNS it's, just, oh, it's really great to be able to do that the other one that I am taking is this this Ellen Harrison that I got from the attic because I really want to do color and cotton versions of these threads. I went ahead and pulled, I knew I had where I'd bought from Stash and Load or something. This calls for Pictureless Plus Ale. So I went ahead and pulled a big piece of Picture and Plus Ale that I had. Really shouldn't take that big of a piece, but I really only have the big piece and a very tiny piece. So this is what it is. So I'm taking this with me to find threads. Is this really going to be this short of a video? Oh, no it's not. Because we're going to travel downstairs and I often show you guys like the plants I'm really into and the ones that like I'm loving right now. We're going to show you a couple of plants. In fact, I may bring them up here that I'm not really into right now because they have been a pain in my butt recently. Let's do that. Let's pause. Hey, you remember that time I brought three plants upstairs and uh, then I talked about all three of them and why I'm mad at them and what the issues are. And then when I was done, I went to go press stop recording and realized I wasn't recording at all. So we're going to do that again. <laughs> Damn it. Hoya Macrophylla. I got this a while ago now at my local Pike Nurseries. I'm convinced because I have bought multiple Hoya from there that whoever their Hoya provider is has some, some mealy bug issues because I have gotten more than one Hoya that ended up having mealy bugs that I got from there. It just, it, it is what it is. This one I have managed to keep alive, but it has been a struggle and we have treated and we have treated and I have dabbed with alcohol until I think I finally got rid of them. I repotted and pardon, pardon my language. I mixed up some um, water with a little bit of Dawn dish soap and like a quarter or a fifth alcohol and sprayed the bitch down. Like every crevice, every leaf, rubbed it in. I think I finally killed them all because we've been good for a while. I've actually put it back into my 
my cabinet. Dang. So I'm still kind of mad at it. It's not the plant's fault, but I'm still a little mad at it. So there's that. Now the sad plants. I bought this one maybe about six months ago, maybe more at my local grocery store, one of them. This is a Peperomia Hope. <laughs> Poor little guy has no hope. I've, I've read that other people struggle with these because they're really particular with how much, how little water they want. It's easy to rot them. And then it's easy for them to, like the roots just to dry up completely because they want a very specific amount of water. It's really dry right now. But, I mean, these two little pieces that are left, this one actually is on its way out. I, I think I give up, but I mean, uh, we'll see. Maybe this won't die. My plan is, because I love, like, I love this leaf shape, this little, like, round orb of a leaf shape. I think I'm going to get a Hoya Matilde, which has a similar leaf shape. In fact, I think I like it better. I just, me and this plant are not friends. Like, it hates me. I'm starting to hate it. It's just bad all around. I mean, it looks pathetic. So while people are like, oh, Emily, you have such a green thumb. You're so good with plants. Mm, no, <laughs> not always. There, I've killed my fair share of plants. This is soon to be one of them. <clears throat> this is my Syngonium Winlandii. I struggle with Syngonium in general because they like to stay moister than I like to keep a plant. This one used to be up here. It didn't like being under that vent right there. So I moved it downstairs and it was just on the struggle bus. So I repotted it. Um, I gave it some fertilizer and moved it into the window below this one because it was enjoying the south window sun, like away from it just a little bit, and it thrived. It did so well. It got bushy and beautiful and had these luxurious, like, perfect little leaves. And then... A few days ago, I went to my sister's overnight. I think this anchored Buster. Because upon my return, later the next day, I recognized that my little asshole had gotten up on the kitchen counter and, like, chewed up part of this plant. And before anybody is like, Oh, Emily, plants are poisonous. I think I had somebody comment once, instant kidney shutdown. It'll kill your cat. It's not going to kill my cat. It's not. It, it's going to make his mouth a little tingly. And he's going to spit it out or throw it up and be like, why did I do that? I also keep all of my plants up high enough where it's not easy for him to get to them. But apparently... Maybe Buster saw the attention and love I was giving this plant. And then I left him for an evening. And in his fury and his anger, he took it out on this plant. And I've also kicked him out of our bedroom the couple of nights since then. Because he's yelled in my face at 6 a.m. And yet again, he has taken it out on this plant. It was so beautiful, like four days ago. I've had to cut most of this plant off because it was just mangled. And you can see this one. It's just got a little buster, like 
We're not even eating it. We're just destroying something mom loves. And like, I would just, they were just pieces that he had ripped off lying around. Turd. So, and you can see he's ripped off like a whole corner, that leaf. So rude. So rude, Buster. Anyway, so I have to find a new place to put this plant so that maybe it will regenerate and once again be happy, even though I've had to cut like half of it off. Please share stories down below of what your little furry assholes have destroyed that you love. I love him. I would do anything for him, but dang, I know I've complained a lot this video. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't mean, I don't mean to be a, a negative Nancy or a downer, but you know, sometimes people and animals just perplex you and piss you off. So that's it guys. I will probably not do another video until the end of June when I'm back from all of my travels. Don't forget if you want um, discounted glasses from Zen Optical to use this code and I'm going to put all of the links and information down in the description box below. I, I definitely recommend these glasses. They, I've had a good experience. And yeah, if you have any thoughts on um, I kind of am starting to get the itch to start a new project as well, which is insane. So yeah, I've put fabrics with all of the ones that I showed you guys previously, except for the one I said I was going to, as I pull more stuff out to show you, except for the one I said I was going to find a fabric at Color and Cotton. I, I'm curious, I might take this one to Color and Cotton, but I'm curious if it would look good on this Tobias that I have which is a uh, Seraphim Fabrics. I have a piece that's like the exact color that it calls for. Well, it looks less like it in this image. But I was looking at it and those people at Silk Weaver, this one that I got forever ago, it's not as Weigart base. It's some other base, which I'm just not as big of a fan of. So I don't know, maybe this one will go with me as well. And I'll find a piece of fabric that I really like for Emily Greenaway. I pulled a piece of Dusty Road for this because I liked the idea of a lighter fabric um, like it is but just a little darker so I pulled that and then guys you know I'm super excited to start this I pulled out this vintage pearl barley. I pulled out some lakeside and we know how much, like you gotta love a piece at this point to sacrifice some lakeside for it. What do y'all think? Vintage pearl barley with this. I think it's going to be kind of cool. I'm starting that sometime this summer. 
another one that I'm starting sometime as I shake the whole camera is Hannah Lancaster. You can get this, the new and improved version from 1884 Stitchery, where it's not a road map. And I did my own color conversion for um, a winner of last year's Duck Derby prize. And it's going to have more color to it. And I pulled this piece of 36 count shadows to do it on. It's not going to be a direct conversion. It's one of those where like, in this instance, the symbol is this color, but over here I'm gonna do it this color. Anyway, I think it's gonna look pretty cool. And I'm excited to do this with more pizzazz and not just some, you know, so heavily tan. So yeah. That may be one that I start sooner rather than later. In a bag that I made ages ago, back when I made bags. Okay, so that is legit it this time. And I will see you guys at the end of June. If you have strong opinions on what I should start, put it down below. Please share your stories about when uh, your husband has had issues with your home decor or when your cat has destroyed something. I want to hear all about it. Please make me laugh and make me feel better. Um, oh, here's a little funny tidbit. Once I'm done with this, I am going to put on long sleeves. Wait, I'll explain. Um, I'm going to put on full socks and shoes and gloves and go feed my coworker and friend's devil cat. Guys, I love cats. I'm a huge cat person. I've interacted with cats my whole life. I worked at a vet clinic for a long time and like I was one of the people that like went in the cat room and like loved on all the cats and her cat might be Satan. I, at this point, her cat hates me so much that when she hears me unlocking the door to come in and feed her, she's trying, like I can hear her yowling and hissing, and she's like trying to like get through the door at me to attack me. And once I push my way in and I'm in the house, like she goes after my ankles, which is why I have to, I, you don't wear flip flops over there which is why like I've got to put on shoes. Yesterday I was like, honey, I love you. Um, your cat hates me. So I put on gloves and I scruffed her and put her in the bathroom and I shut the door. And then I did all the stuff at her house that I needed to do and put food in the bowl and went out back and played with her giant dog that loves me. Like, he meets me and he's like, hey, hey, you here to play? You here to play? You here, you here to pet me? You here to pet me? And the, the cat, like, tries to annihilate me. And I, I just, I can't wrap my head around it. So anyway, so I've got to go over there today. And deal with the cat. It hates me. Like, before, if I did, like, this is why I scruff it and put it in the bathroom because to get to where the food is, I have to go in between like the wall and the couch, but behind the couch to the closet and she will get on the couch and be like, and like try to come at me and pounce on me. I'm like, you are 
You are a devil cat. Why do you hate so much? Who hurt you, Oreo? So, yeah. Um, a lot of candle. Pray for me. Whatever your thing is. That uh, I can make it through Wednesday when she comes home and feeds her own cat. That's it. I'm, I'm really gone this time. Uh, tell me stories in the comments. Make me feel better about all of the weird stuff going on. And I will see you guys at the end of June.